Heavenly Father, we again come to Thee, O Father. How wonderful it is that we can go to Thee so readily that Thou hast commanded us indeed to come boldly to the throne of grace. Father, we have so much to be thankful for. We thank Thee for for caring for us through this week. We thank Thee for blessing after blessing after blessing. We thank Thee that again we can look into Thy Word. We thank Thee for Thy Word. Oh, Father, where would we be without Thy Word as we see truth from Thy Word? Now, Father, we read many things that we don't like to hear about. Father, we pray that we only have, may have one desire, and that is to be faithful to what Thou dost teach us. And, and, and again, very lovingly, that very lovingly we might share it with others. Father, bless us now in this hour. Bless all the activities of this day. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, we began to uh, uh, do a study of the book of Jonah. However, I would like to take a detour for a few studies because there are some things that, uh, that should be talked about even ahead of the book of Jonah. Uh, you know... During these past years, we have learned a very, very profound piece of information from the Bible, namely that to every purpose there is time and the law. Uh, and uh, as we, uh, we, did, we weren't even aware of that uh, commandment until years after we had already found, as we studied the Bible, that the Bible has an enormous amount of information about time. And so long ago we were able to already start at the very uh, beginning of time and, and be able to reconcile our modern calendar with the biblical calendar so that we could, uh, could know from the Bible, from the Bible, that creation occurred in the ele- year 11,013 B.C. And that was just the beginning. And at that time, uh, this already happened 45 years ago. At that time, uh, at least I hadn't the slightest idea that this would finally get us into a very, very uh, accurate and uh, 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 information concerning the very end of time. But uh, as we have been going along and God has opened up his word to us step by step, we have learned more and more about the timeline of history. And one thing we have discovered, and you know, when the Bible says to every purpose there is time and the law, they go hand in hand together. They're not separate issues. They, they inter- integrate with each other. And particularly in our day, as God is also opening our eyes to the details of the end of the world, we find that... The more we know about what God puts in the Bible concerning the time elements concerned with the end of the world, it also assists very, very greatly in helping us to understand the law of God. A lot of phrases in the Bible that otherwise we cannot understand. Uh, I have found this increasingly so, uh, that since we have... I think quite accurately discovered from the Bible that God basically ended the world, uh, that is, came to a major junction uh, right near the end of the world in the year 1988, which was the 13,000th anniversary of the history of the world. And that would would follow, would be about 23 years, uh, and then we would come to the very end, and as we were and then we were able from the Bible to discover that that again was broken up into a couple of periods of time. The first part being 2300 days and then follow that by a slightly more than 17 years and, and we would come right to the end. And once that was clearly defined in the Bible and in our minds so that we could understand this is what the Bible teaches. This came out of the Bible. It didn't come out of, out of uh, some kind of a vision or, or some kind of a 
philosophical thinking of some kind, but it came right out of the Bible. Now, when we go back into chapter after chapter and verse after verse of the Bible, we can begin to understand words and phrases that heretofore have been very elusive. We haven't been able to know what to do with this verse or that verse. And this kind of, a, of an activity still continues, still continues. We just very recently, just in our study of the dedication of the temple, uh, came to the fact that in all likelihood the very last day of the history of this world would be October 21 in the year 2011. Uh, that it was the eighth day that of the final of the uh, uh, of the uh, Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of the Bible. Again, that's another piece of information that's really unfolded for us, that the Feast of Tabernacles uh, should really be called the Feast of the Bible or the Feast of the Word of God. It is a feast pointing to how glorious the Bible has become. And we learn even from that 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 last day was, a, was to be two days in length so that it would end up on October 21 rather than October 20 as the last day of the history of the world. Now, the, the uh, uh, fact is that as we continue to search the Bible, we still uh, find that there are numbers that God is opening up for us. Uh, we talked about this several months ago, as a matter of fact, that someone had seen that, that uh, uh, the final 8,553 days. Oh, let me back up a little bit because I'm going to go too fast here and, and uh, we're going to get befuddled. But we, we did discover, for example, that the last day of the church age from everything we can know in the Bible was May 21, 1988. And we found that there was enormous precision because uh, the first day of the church age was Pentecost, which was May 22, 33 A.D. And so exactly for a full 1955 years to the very day the church age existed. It started on May 22 of A.D. 33 or 33 A.D. and it ended on May 21 in, in uh, 1988. And we've held that information. We've, we've uh, worked with that information uh, for many, many months. And we've never found anything in the Bible that contradicted this or that uh, could not be fit into place with this information. In fact, as I've indicated, it has assisted us in opening up a lot of verses that otherwise we could not understand. The, other, the thing we have found, of course, is that the Bible is very, very analytical. What I mean by that is uh, I, I, I was reading, someone sent me a little uh, a brochure about what one of the denominations was doing. And then they were introducing a course in their seminary called the philosophy of something, the philosophy of the gospel or the philosophy of Christianity or whatever. And they put their finger right on a very real problem because that's exactly to a high degree the way the Bible has been looked upon as some kind of a philosophical book. In other words, our, whatever our minds can be kind of determine from what is said. But the Bible is not a philosophy Bible on uh, uh, a book on philosophy. It is like an like an engineering book. It is an analytical book. It's just like God when he designed the universe. He didn't design it philosophically. Uh, somehow, somehow that that spaceship is going to reach the moon if, if things just happen to fit together. No way. It was all designed with numbers, very accurate, very exact numbers, so that they could, with pinpoint accuracy, land those people on the moon or send a spaceship to Mars because God has, uh, is a God uh, that is is everything is very analytical. Everything ties together with great precision. And even though we can't suspect this right away when we read the Bible, because we read uh, 
so many verses that we don't know what to do with. Actually, when we finally solve what they mean, we find, yes, it has to be, it is very, very, uh, it has to be understood with great precision. Well, so we came to the year uh, 1988, and then in one of our studies we got discovered that the last day was October 21 in uh, 2011. And then we began to notice that, again, the great precision that from the time of the, of the uh, 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 end of the church age, May 21, 1988 until October 21 uh, in, uh, in uh, 2011, there were 8,553 days, and they divided up into two very significant numbers, 8,400 plus 153. And uh, uh, I did make a note uh, 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 back then where I indicated that uh, someone had discovered that when we go from the uh, the uh, time of the uh, from the time of the cross, which we know with great precision again, <laughs> because the Bible is very analytical, we found that Christ was crucified on, according to our calendar, April one and thirty three A.D. And when we go to May 21, 2011 A.D., there were exactly, someone computed this, and they did it accurately, correctly, uh, there were exactly 722,500 days inclusive uh, between, uh, from, this, uh, from, uh, from uh, April 1, 33 A.D. to May 21, 2011 A.D., now, is that a curiosity? And the answer is, no, it can't be a curiosity. For some reason, God has, uh, that's, a, that's the way the whole Bible kept unfolding, that everything fits together. It has purpose. Because when we take that number, 722,500, uh, and break it down into its significant numbers, and we've learned to do this, uh, as we worked with the numbers of the Bible, we saw that nothing was erratic, nothing was haphazard, and we find it breaks down into very significant numbers. Five times five times 17 times 17 times 100. <laughs> All right, I, let, let, me, let, me, uh, let me develop this a little more slowly. We've come to... We uh, let's let's start right here. We're at May 21 in A.D. 1988. Okay, we find that there are a uh, uh, there are 8,553 days till October 21, 2011. Now those dates have been taken out of the Bible. They are not they're not philosophical. They're not guesses. They're they're simply uh, dates that fit. The language of the Bible are very, very accurately. And then when we break that, that 8553 down into its two, uh, two very significant numbers, 8400 and 153, because we can sum those together to get, uh, to get there, we find that, the, that after 8400 days, this is where I'm trying to get to, 8400 days, we get to May 21, 2011. And, and we wonder, well, what's significant about May 21, 2011? That's 153 days earlier than, than uh, October 21, 2011. And as I've indicated, uh, this individual who sent me a letter about this had already calculated that May 21 somehow is a big date. It's an important date because it was exactly 722,500 days inclusive from the day that Christ hung on the cross. And any time you find two numbers, two dates that tie together in a significant way, this number 722,500, 
are being able to be broken down into 5 times 5 times 17 times 17 times 100. Something has to be going on. Something has to be going on. Well, then as we uh, continue to look at this, we find something else very interesting. And that is the, the Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation was anticipated the first time back in the year uh, when, when Joseph uh, was prime minister or second in command in Egypt and there was the famine, the seven year famine in the land. And we know, we've learned a long time ago, that that was a picture of the great tribulation that is the last 23 years of the history of the world. And, and the significant number in seven years is 84 because there are 12 months in a year and 7 times 12 gives us a significant number, 84, 84. Well, then when we look at another pattern that is a very, very definite pattern of this final great tribulation in which we presently are, we find that was what happened to Judah uh, beginning in the year 609 B.C. when Josiah was killed and going to the year 539 B.C. when uh, Babylon was conquered by the Medes and the Persians. And that 70-year period is also a portrait of the Great Tribulation, and it also features the number 84, because there are 840 months in 70 years. So we find the number 84 uh, 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 looks at that. Then, uh, again, I received a note from somebody who said, you know, they figured out that, you know, when from when... when uh, Jacob left Canaan, and that was a, the, probably the most difficult decision he's ever made in his life when his whole family had to leave Canaan and come into the land of Egypt in the year 1877 B.C., which was tied right into that, that tribulation that he was going through. Uh, it was a picture that God had abandoned the land of Canaan. And, you know, when God abandoned the church age, and the church age was very significant because it, for 1955 years, God had put an umbrella of the gospel over the whole world through the local congregations, go into all the world with all the gospel. And the divine organism was the church. And then in the year 1988, God completely abandoned the churches. He, he put Satan there to rule, uh, like the, uh, the, uh, uh, like the, uh, the, uh, 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 idolatrous people that, uh, that existed in the land of Canaan would be ruling now that Jacob and his family had left, uh, and he, uh, abandoned, uh, the churches, uh, the Holy Spirit was no longer there. So the year 1988 was very parallel to what happened in, 19, uh, in 1877 B.C. when Jacob left the land of Canaan. And this individual pointed out something very interesting, that if we uh, add the numbers together from 1877 B.C., when, when uh, Jacob left the land of Canaan to the year 1988, when God left all of the congregations. Terrible statement, but that's exactly what the Bible teaches. It adds up to 3,864 years. And when we break that number down, we find that it is two, and two identifies with the sending forth of the gospel, times 23, 23 is the number of judgment, times 84. Again, we get the number 84. And we know that the year 1988 was the beginning of the Great Tribulation. Now, another thing that we've known for a long time, I'm just taking some little bits and pieces together here, and, 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 but they all are there. They're all accurate. They're, they're, these are not... These are not guesses. These are not uh, 
the speculation. These are just little pieces of fact that are there. And then what we're going to try to do is tie this all together. But an, another uh, interesting thing that I discovered a long time ago was that there are exactly 8,400 days in 23 years. Isn't that interesting? 8,400 days in 23 years. So here we see Jacob uh, right in the heart of his great tribulation, having to uh, completely abandon the promised land where his forebears, Abraham and Isaac, and he himself had been for 215 years, and go to that wicked country of Egypt, which was typifying the world out there, and, and leave that promised land. And, and now exactly uh, 2 times 23 times 84 years later, God is telling all the local congregations, which is a worldwide phenomenon that's been going on for 1955 years, I'm abandoning you, and the whole world is under the wrath, is under the judgment of God. And this, of course, we learn in this, uh, that for, this would go on for 2,300 days, and then God would again uh, begin the harvest of, the, of uh, his people all through the world. So we find that the number 84 and the number 23 really identify with a period of great tribulation. Now, there is a verse that really, uh, that really uh, now we have to face, and, and we can begin to face. Through, through the, these last months, I have been asked again and again and again by individuals, uh, please, what does it mean when we look at Matthew chapter 24, Matthew 24, uh, and we, uh, it, where again, it talks about this period of great tribulation. There will be great tribulation. And then it says in verse 29, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And they've... they've Press me. You've got to tell me. What does this mean? I said, I don't know. Please, please. I don't try to force the Bible. Don't try to I, <laughs> I think that you can just sit here and immediately come up with answers. I'm scared to death to do that because this is not, this is not, we're not playing a game here. We're not, this isn't just a, 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 an idea of trying to be spectacular or something. This is something that is very, very serious. And until we have better information, we better be careful what we're talking about. But when we look at this same passage in the Gospel of Mark, we find something very significant there, very significant in Mark 13, where we read in, it's in Mark 13 is essentially a carbon copy of Matthew 24, very, very close in the various elements that it is bringing forth about what is happening during this time of great tribulation. But then in verse 24, God says, But in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Well, now notice what God is saying here. And I have learned a long time ago that every word came from the mouth of God. And nothing is there accidentally or incidentally. We've come to the end of our time, and so we can't go any further with this program. We trust that you will look into the Bible and read these things we've been talking about. Check it out to make sure that what you are hearing on this program is faithful to the Word of God, because finally, the only authority is the Bible.